I'm going to hand it over to Craig. He will give you a, a presentation. And order bittite on the panelists to comment diben, and then we will open up the dialogue. So thank you, Craig. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I've, I've been asked many times um, if I injured my leg in Bangladesh. I can assure you I didn't. It happened in Singapore. Um, and I hope by next week I'll be able to get rid of these crutches. So uh, I'm well on the way to recovery. So let me just get my <coughs> presentation up. So I just wanted to make some um, general comments about what we're seeing in terms of digital transformation and how that's impacting the financial services industry. Uh, this quote from uh, a leader of, of one of the world's largest uh, banks and financial institutions. It's a, a common statement across banks, but also a common statement across uh, many organizations is that our costs are too high and our agility is too low. Uh, and if we don't change this, we won't be able to compete. And I think that type of sentiment we're hearing more and more from uh, organizations wherever we work. Uh, and the, the challenge really of how do you make those investments and at the same time cut costs. Uh, and this is where we're really now starting to see the power of the cloud starting to provide an answer to those types of questions and challenges. Uh, digital transformation is having a major impact in the financial services industry around the world. Uh, Digital is disrupting all sorts of industries, and people I'm sure are familiar with the Uber story. Taxi company without having taxis, Airbnb, a hotel company without owning hotels. Uh, we even have uh, the KNAB Bank in the Netherlands now, which is a bank that's completely operating without having physical branches. So this sort of transformation is happening any, everywhere. I'm based in Singapore. The amount of investment in fintech organizations there is extraordinary at the moment. Uh, the incumbent banks are certainly very aware of that impact and are looking for ways to leverage the reach and the capabilities they have as organizations already, but staying relevant in that environment where particularly the younger generation of people are not even considering opening bank accounts because they can do it with many other types of organizations that are much easier and much more efficient for them to deal with. Uh, so there's no doubt a lot of challenges impacting financial sector, and that's really reaching out throughout the world, as we'll see through some of the examples that I have and we'll talk about a bit later. So again, looking at what that challenge really means for, for financial sector organizations, a lot of conflicting priorities that need to be met somehow, driving growth, becoming more agile, managing risk, which uh, in the financial sector in particular, the amount of regulation that's coming on board now is becoming significantly much more difficult to, to keep track of, uh, and all the while trying to do this while reducing costs. So just some of the, the statistics we see from a financial services perspective. 70% of IT costs are basically just keeping the lights on, uh, keeping current operations going. That doesn't leave a lot of money for innovating, for uh, reaching out to customers, developing new products and services, looking at some of this new technology and how it can be used and embraced to stay relevant in face of what the fintech companies are doing. Uh, interestingly, I think that if you look at the financial sector in the US uh, as a bellwether in, that, in, in how financial sectors are being impacted, uh, before 2009, 30% of corporate profits in the US came from the financial sector. That's now dropped down to almost half of that now, 17%. A huge impact on the profitability and revenue contribution of the financial sector, no doubt partially caused by the financial crisis, but just in general, the impact that's having in terms of the revenues and the margins that uh, financial sector organizations are able to generate. So the cloud, from Microsoft's point of view, cloud is, is the bet that we've made for our company. Cloud is the future that we see engaging not just with financial sector companies, but all, all the companies around the world. It's a, a $10 billion a year investment that we're making uh, just in terms of providing infrastructure to provide that cloud globally. Um, but there's a lot of perception, particularly within the financial sector, that regulators won't allow financial institutions to use public cloud. Uh, and part of what I want to talk to, to today is about what we're doing around the world with regulators to address that concern. And in some cases, in fact, that concern is, is indeed a perception rather than reality. So if we look at the conversation that we were having with organizations two years ago, it was typically around, we see that moving to the cloud is inevitable, but now is not the right time. Uh, but we've seen just over the last two years that that perception is really changing now. And it's now the conversations are having much more about how can you help me move there in a safe uh, and a secure way? 
And to address those sorts of concerns, particularly from the financial services perspective, uh, we've now engaged over the last 12 months with 45 financial service regulators around the world to address some of these concerns, to understand what their concerns are. Um, for example, now uh, Germany has the highest data security requirements currently in the world, and that is our base standard now that we've implemented across our cloud services for financial services. Um, so in many cases, we're actually ahead of where regulators are requesting uh, cloud security to be. Uh, and uh, that's certainly starting to resonate very well with customers that are concerned about those sorts of issues. Uh, and for example there, we now have six of the top eight too big to fail insurers and 17 of the top 26 too big to fail banks now that have committed themselves to the Microsoft Cloud Platform. So we are seeing momentum starting to build in that area. A lot of those concerns are being addressed uh, and we're starting to see a lot of engagement around the Cloud Platform for banking organisations. So our approach to cloud is based on four key principles. Security is paramount, making sure that uh, the confidentiality, confidentiality and integrity of that data is well protected. Again, Microsoft spends $1 billion a year on ensuring the security of its cloud data. Um, in many cases, I think that provides a level of security that would not be replicable by any other organization on its own in-premise uh, capabilities. Just because it's on-premise doesn't mean you're unhackable, of course, as we see with many organizations being hacked. Once you're connected to the internet, you are exposed. Um, and Microsoft provides a much higher level of security than almost any other organization in the world can provide. We've done that for 20 plus years with our own data, handling billions of transactions with our customers every year, and we've now built that into the very core of the cloud services that we're providing organizations, including financial sector. Uh, privacy and control is very important. No one is able to use your data um, without you approving and knowing about it. Uh, compliance, very important. Uh, as I mentioned, with all of those regulators, we've understood what their compliance requirements are. We implement that within our services to make sure that we are complying with all of those requirements. We also offer, we extend that beyond that for customers that use our cloud services. If they have concerns or issues or requests, they can come and propose those to us. Where it makes sense, uh, we can implement those. Um, but certainly as soon as a regulation change or a new regulation requirement comes up, that will be deployed as part of our cloud services. And finally, transparency. Uh, you will have complete visibility of where your data is, how it's being handled and how it's being used. So I think just in terms of the Azure platform, uh, it is the most compliant uh, platform that's currently available in the market today, whether you're looking across industry types of uh, certifications and compliance regulations, particularly within the US, um, very far advanced with most of the regulator bodies there in terms of making sure we're compliant. Uh, and also in other regions around the world, the UK government, Singapore, China, et cetera, in terms of working with those organizations to ensure that we're meeting the requirements that are required there. So just to bring that a bit closer to home, an example um, that we've been dealing with a lot with, with Singapore banks, uh, the Monetary Authority of Singapore came out mid, mid last year with a new position, or actually it was a clarification on their policy towards public cloud for the financial sector. And there are a number of things that they brought up that would, I think are quite relevant to the discussion that we can talk about today. And one of those, uh, the first point was, they wanted to dispel a lot of urban myths that had grown up around the Monetary Authority's um, aspect or perspective on public cloud. There was a perception in the market that they were not in favor of banks using public cloud and they wanted to dismiss that, that not at all the case. And in fact, they see there are many advantages for banks to take advantage of using the cloud, whether it be cost reduction, uh, much more quicker and more efficient rolling out of those services. And as I mentioned before, access to best practices and much more secure environments that they could probably develop themselves. Uh, their attitude towards public cloud has now moved to a point where this is just another form of outsourcing and should be looked at in the context of outsourcing. Um, so in terms of ensuring that as you would do all of your regular due diligence with any other form of outsourcing in the organization, cloud is just another aspect of that process which requires its own due diligence in ensuring that the correct controls uh, and measures are in place to ensure the security of the operation and the data. Uh, in the past, there had been a requirement to let MAS know when banks were 
putting parts of their organisation onto the cloud. The feedback from the industry was that that was an onerous requirement, in many cases not really required, uh, and the MAS agreed that, that they would no longer require that notification. Of course, if there was some sort of outage or security breach, then notification standard clauses would be required. But for an organisation to make that decision to switch some part of their business into the cloud no longer required that oversight from uh, the regulator in Singapore. Uh, point five, there was again a, a perception that uh, there was data sovereignty issues with data needing to be stored within Singapore. Uh, MAS pointed out that that had never been a requirement that they had, nor was it a requirement under the Public um, uh, Information Security Act, uh, which for many other organisations um, was quite a revelation. So the MAS's main point and main concern about uh, customer information is that it's secure. That doesn't necessarily require it to be within the country. Uh, and as long as those security requirements can be met, they were okay for that to exist uh, off-site. Security, nonetheless, security remains the primary concern and the core consideration for organisations using that is with ever, whichever service provider they're looking at to make sure that those minimum security requirements are met and are clearly spelt out in the contracts uh, and understood um, to ensure that that security requirement is met. Another, a lot of the concern comes back around uh, customer data and making sure that people's personal information is kept secure. Uh, those regulations remain in place, but that level of security, again, the authority has agreed, is not required to cover other types of information that a bank may be using and storing on the cloud. So if it's publicly available information or if it's information that has been anonymised or encrypted, then again, those level of security requirements can be relaxed uh, because the, the, the risk to that data being breached is much lower and therefore that imposition on the organisation is not required from a security perspective. Uh, I think um, beyond that, most of the other points really come back to the relationship that you have as a financial institution with the service provider that's providing that cloud relationship. Making sure that you've done your due diligence with the provider of that cloud service uh, in terms of what you're putting out there and what security levels are required. I think it's quite, um, when people talk about cloud the issue of core banking and, and customer data comes up a lot of times, but it's, it's important to remember that there's a lot of other applications for cloud that banks can use to get efficiencies and improvements in their performance without necessarily touching those core systems or that core customer data. For example, websites uh, can be put up on the cloud very quickly. Your development and test environment without you putting your production environment can be done very quickly. Your backup environments can be done for a country like Bangladesh, potentially, where there's a lot of risk of natural disaster, can make sense to have your backup offshore to make sure that it's safe in the case of some sort of major disruption from that point of view. Uh, so archiving is another area where banks are using cloud um, to uh, provide benefits to them without necessarily touching the core systems or the core customer data. So now to turn just quickly a bit more to what we're seeing when we're working with financial sector organisations around digital transformation. We tend to break this down into four key areas. Engaging your customers, empowering your employees, optimising your processes and operations, and transforming your products and services. So I'd like to talk just briefly about some examples there. I think we start off with a video. Let me see if that's going to work. At Metrobank, we're harnessing the latest technology to empower our colleagues and provide excellent customer experiences. Let's show you what we're doing. Good afternoon. Welcome to Metrobank. How can I help? So, Kate, I hear you're interested in expanding your business. I'd love to hear what got you started initially and what your plans are. Well, I've been running the business from home and it's been growing really quickly and I need better premises. I think it's time for a new bank. Information about our procedures is fast and easy to find, enabling our colleagues to provide helpful answers in seconds. We use modern communication tools to locate the next available specialist, there and then, so our customers aren't kept waiting, nor do they have to make an appointment another day. Our systems are fast and easy to use, so staff can initiate internal processes while meeting the customers. 
Well, thank you, Kate. That's really useful. Um, I'd like to introduce you to someone from our asset finance team. I really think they could help you. We use automated processes to reduce administration and ensure that every inquiry is dealt with promptly and professionally. And with the latest mobile devices, the service continues wherever our colleagues are working. Kate, it's Jonathan from Metro Bank Asset Finance. Good news, the finance has been agreed for your new equipment. Thank you, that's amazing. I can't wait to get up and running in my new shop. Microsoft is at the core of everything we do. We use dynamic CRM at the heart of our business, managing our customer information and automating our processes. SharePoint stores all of our documentation and Skype for Business allows us to communicate in the fastest and most convenient ways. With Microsoft, we're changing the way banking works. So Metro Bank is a, a bank based in the UK, uh, and they have used uh, Microsoft's 0365 cloud productivity capabilities to change the way they're operating as a bank. Uh, my colleague that was here yesterday is actually a customer of Metro Bank, and he talked about how when he went into Metro Bank in the UK, he opened up three accounts and walked out with a credit card in under 20 minutes. Uh, and that was enabled by this productivity platform that the bank was able to deploy and focus much more on getting the customer through the process much more quickly, as we say, in a frictionless environment um, by linking all of the various banking systems together through that productivity system. Uh, if we talk about empowering employees, an example with Westpac, uh, they were looking at what they call banking at the speed of life and providing uh, devices and tools to their advisors to be able to interact in real time with their customers, particularly looking around their um, investment type decisions. And so they deployed um, both systems and the devices to allow those uh, advisors to be able to provide that service anywhere, either in the bank, uh, at the customer's site or at their home, uh, and have access to all of that bank information and including specialists to be able to ask specific questions in real time uh, to enable them to much more quickly and efficiently address customers' questions and information. Uh, a local example which has only just uh, fairly recently been released, Development Bank in Singapore uh, has selected uh, 0365 as their productivity platform for their 22,000 uh, employees across the bank. And this really is part of their strategy to move the bank towards a much more fintech-like uh, capability. Firstly, to get their own customers thinking much more in a digital, uh, their own employees thinking in a much more digital savvy way about what's possible within the bank. But also to give them that flexibility to be able to respond much more quickly in real time to what customers are asking and to address those questions and concerns. Uh, in terms of optimising operations, Credit Suisse uh, needed an innovative uh, tool to help them access or assess risk in a lot of their uh, customer situations where they're uh, putting together fairly large deals for their customers. And they were looking for a flexible solution architecture that would allow various different risk modules to be plugged in and out of that process as required. Uh, and they used that uh, platform based on Microsoft technology to allow them to reduce the costs in that process, but also much more effectively and efficiently assess risk uh, profiles of those uh, offers and interactions with their customers, again, in a real-time basis, um, reducing that time by several days, often in many of the cases that they were dealing with with customers. Finally, in terms of uh, transforming products and services, Temenos uh, is an organisation that provides banking systems to over 700 banks around the world. Uh, and as part of the response to the growing demand for cloud services, they've moved a lot of those services into the cloud. One of the things that they're saying is that allows them to help customers, particularly with month-end closing, can be uh, a big, uh, take a lot of resourcing time and can take a lot of days, even with automated systems. But by able to use the flexibility of the cloud and have burst processing, they can now complete that process for their banks much quicker than it had been in the past. Um, the other thing that's allowed them to do is to take banking services into some of the most remote parts 
parts of the world uh, and deliver banking anywhere, as they say, anywhere where there's a phone, uh, they can deliver banking services. And they've already signed up uh, 10 million customers in the last two years where no banks have previously existed. So I'll just flick across to that video, have a look at that. <coughs> Right now, there are two billion people who don't have access to basic banking. But that is changing. At Temenos, we use the Microsoft Cloud to provide banking to the millions and millions of people who need it but don't have access to it. With the Microsoft Cloud, we can enable a banker to travel to the most remote locations with nothing but a phone and a tablet. More and more people are getting access to credit. Everywhere where there's a phone, you have a bank. So now a person is able to start a business and generate an income and employ somebody for the first time. And you can actually see the success. It's transforming our world. The Microsoft Cloud helped us to bring banking to 10 million people in just two years. That's potentially 10 million new businesses. Technology is about breaking down barriers, removing limitations so that every person has access to opportunity. A small amount of money can change people's lives. It's very, very powerful. And just one, one final example I'll talk about. Can't be speaking at a... Sorry. Right now, there are two... can't be speaking at a financial event without mentioning blockchain. Um, distributed ledger technologies is definitely something that is growing very fast around the world. Just some of the statistics that you can see there, 2,500 patents filed around this technology in the past three years. Uh, 90 percent, uh, 90 plus central banks have engaged in discussions worldwide. Uh, 80 percent of banks are predicted to be initiating DLT projects in 2017. This is really looking at being a, a very um, revolutionary technology driven uh, through access to the cloud, which is going to change the way a lot of banking works. So that was a very brief um, overview from a Microsoft perspective. Uh, thank you for your time. <laughs>